It's one of college football's classic rivalries. Notre Dame versus Michigan State. The year was 1966, 20 years ago, when Coach Duffy Doherty met Eric Parsegan at midfield. It was the game of the century. Michigan State would score first, but Notre Dame answered soon after. And the nation's two top teams fought to a 10-10 tie. And the rivalry rages on to this day. They first played in 1897. Today, it's still one of college football's classic confrontations. It's Notre Dame versus Michigan State. We're live in East Lansing, Michigan. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger. Notre Dame and Michigan State, both teams coming off tough losses. They had chances to win down the stretch. Both teams want this one badly. I'll be here with Coach Eric Parsegan and Pat O'Brien roaming the sidelines and keeping us up to date with everything else that's going on back in our studio in New York is Jim Nan. But right now, let's rejoin Brett and Era in East Lansing. Brett? All right, Jim, thank you. And the Spartan marching band on the field. We're just about ready to go, and we'll be back in East Lansing, Michigan, in just a moment. Any way you cut it, said Holtz, we still came up a loser last week. We'll try to correct that here this afternoon. But it won't be easy. George Burris will be ready. Spartans have not beaten Notre Dame here in East Lansing since 1968. And George Perlis, their outstanding coach, is determined to change that here this afternoon. Here, it will be Montgomery kicking off for the Spartans. Miller back deep for the Irish, lets it go out of the end zone. And on the touchback, it'll come out at the 20-yard line is flanked out wide to the right. They have two wide receivers on the right of Burline and the tight end to his left. And they bring Green back to the strong side. Making that play on first down for George Perlis's defense. And Era, maybe the Irish will have to put it up early on this drive. Well, there comes a the double flanker. They've got a couple of design things off of this. Oh. on the play the timing was perfect Notre Dame strikes first on its first possession Carney has only had 16 out of 51 a year ago kickoff return let's see if he puts this one in the end zone it's a great offensive weapon now oh, they're going to return this one Ingram at the five breaks a tackle at the 19 brought down at the 33 by Marv Spence, a cornerback. Let's take a look at this offense. One of the most unheralded quarterbacks in the Big Ten is Dave Urema, and all he does is win. Andre Rison, and they're going to go without a huddle. They're going to come out right away. So, Rison and Mark Ingram are the wide receivers, and they're at the line of scrimmage for first down right away. They pitch to White. And the Heisman Trophy candidate gets to the 35 yard line and they're doing a good job thus far although this is a second down play third down third, third down. and about two right and nothing hurts a team that tries a hurry up than to be stuffed in three downs and out reverse and they're out. There they go. Ingram. they are not stuffed they've got the first down out at the 48 yard line and spence again on the tackle along with kovalevsky the captain of the Irish this year. Big moment for the line here. Third and one. White. First down. Crosses the 40-yard line. Brought down at the 36 by Lawrence, the free safety. Second down and five. Burline with a quick drop. And Todd Crum scores for the Spartans. Decide the outcome 
of football games, the mistakes that a team makes. The Irish with an underthrown pass and Todd Crum of the Spartans picking it off and turning momentum completely around here in East Lansing. Todd Crum was the leading interceptor last year with four. He just picked one off for the score. In addition to that, get right back to it. Brent, that was a great defensive move. That was a call from the sideline, predetermined. You should have been here in 1966. <laughs> hey, yeah, you had some help on the sidelines, didn't you? With the fans all around you that day? Oh, we sure did. I'll get to that in a minute, too. <laughs> Timmy Brown is deep. And the kick is short. Taken by the Irish and stopped short of the 15. Moment momentum can shift. It really can encourage the Spartans, of course, and, and make it a little tough for the Irish. Berline rolling to the left. Does not put it up. And now they will face a third down play. So, Era, here's a chance for Lou Holtz to look at his punter. Yeah. First time this year they didn't have to punt once last week, and it looks like they're coming after it. They got 10 men on the line of scrimmage, Brent. Uh-oh. I got it. Oh, fortunate bounce for the Irish. How about that bounce off a block kick? And the ball is at the Spartan 40-yard line. They roll around, and Ingram holds on this time. Inside the 45-yard line with Wilson again. Off a fake. Complete. Ingram. Out of bounds at the 26-yard line. What'd she teach him? She te taught him how to run quickly to the dinner table. And look at it. Right inside the 15-yard line. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt by Cottle. The Spartans lead Notre Dame by 4-7-3. It's good. The White's team is up 10-3. And Montgomery... We'll be kicking it off here to the Irish. We've got 9.42 to go, and Tim Brown, who returned a kickoff for a touchdown in South Bend against Michigan State, will return this one from the four. He will not return this one. He was swarmed all over by the Spartans, led by Harlan Bartnett. Steve Berline has returned as the Notre Dame quarterback, and from the wishbone, steps quickly to the left, and he is hauled down by Mark Nichols. The Irish are only one of five on third downs against Polis's defense. Incomplete, intended for Jackson. That was a fine defensive play by Miller. They're using a lot of different combination coverage as well as stunts in the, in the line. And it does have the Irish off balance. And also, the Irish haven't looked at that even look that the Spartans use. They're going in more of a prevent here. Pump fake, left side, knocked away. defensive back that one Ron Rowe number 18 who swatted the ball away intended for Timmy Brown yeah how about your thoughts so well a big play I think has been the Spartan defense they've done a remarkable job now the offense has been doing a good job here's White another first down as we hit the half here in East Lansing it is 10-3 Michigan State over Notre Dame White down and he almost busted it <laughs> first down and 25 yards to go for Berline steps up in the pocket throws and incomplete almost intercepted intended receiver was Tim Brown and Paul Bobbitt is there but he's a good bat now we'll get a check and see if White is injured or they're just giving him a break here early. you would think from this position you'd want White in the game throw by there you see Ingram on the comeback. First down, we have 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Michigan State leads Notre Dame 10-3. Johnson. Has an alley. Inside the 10-yard line. Boy, that's a good-looking run. They didn't miss one on that. 
Oakland. He's made one from 24 and missed one from 25. He makes this one. It's a 10-point lead by the Spartans. Burline is 4 of 15 passing. Overall, he is 8 of 20 for 79 yards. He'll put it up again, and he's under pressure, and he throws incomplete. There was Dave Wolf on him. They wanted intentional grounding. And it is the work of that defensive line. So for third and 17, Burline drops it to Brown, and he cannot escape Tim Moore. Number 42 stayed right with him, the linebacker. Michigan State with the ball on their own 30-yard line and a 10-point lead, 13-3. And here comes Lorenzo White, and he battles his way out to the 39-yard line, second and 10. Second down and eight. Yurima going long toward Ingram. Ingram's got it. Touchdown, Spartans. opens up a little daylight between the Spartans and the Irish. Last week, Ingram caught only one pass, but he got a step on that secondary era, and it was a beautifully thrown ball. It was perfectly thrown by Urema. Second and very short. Their line running the option down the line is stuck. Wishbone. Brown going to the angle. He won't get it. The Spartan Stephen and John Miller, number 44, comes up from that corner with terrific run support. Corner blitz. No. For Brown at the four. And the Spartans indicate that they have taken it away. Great play by that defense. And that was John Miller, number 44, who moments ago came up on run support. This time he drops back and gets the ball away from Tim Brown. I would guess that single coverage again on either Ingram or Eisen. There's the rollout. And they drop it underneath to Morris. But they slot Brown to the left on second and ten. Under pressure, ball is loose, Notre Dame recovers. And Notre Dame, just as they did a week ago, trying to come back down and pull one out. Burline intercepted by Crum. Team. I think the game plan that George Perlis right there put together along with his staff and the energy that they played with was deserving of the victory. They did an outstanding job. 
There's the president of the university hugging his football coach. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien, Pat. George, congratulations. Congratulations. First of all, I guess we can't talk enough about Todd Crum and your defense. Todd Crum gave us, you know, the two big interceptions. Without him, we probably wouldn't won the game. And that's as simple as that. Like Chuck Noll would say, it's as simple as that. What did it mean to beat Notre Dame today? Oh, it means a lot. I, uh, I'm happy to win. I can't get uh, too upset. Uh, I, I'm just glad to win. I'm, I know we're fortunate, and I take it in that vein. Well done. Congratulations, Coach. Let's go back upstairs to Brent. A class man who has done a fine job the right way here at Michigan State, and his field leader, Dave Urema. So for the first time since 1968, the Spartans beat the Irish in East Lansing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local stations. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of this game for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, a young man who was all over the field today, Troy Wilson, the cornerback. And for the Spartans of Michigan State, he intercepted two passes today, one for a touchdown, one the game saver. Todd Crum, and a check in the amount of $1,000 is donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund. 